Welcome to Cloud Infrastructure Services YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to show you how you can set up a Bugzilla issue tracker on Ubuntu running on Azure. So simply click the link in the description box to come to this marketplace listing for Azure and from here you want to create a new virtual machine with this particular image. Now this image comes with all the prerequisites and even the Bugzilla pre-installed inside it. So to get started, simply click on get it now. After that, simply click on continue. After that, you would be brought to this product page from where you need to click on create. And then you would be taken to this page from where you can customize your virtual machine. So choose the subscription that you have and choose the resource group by either creating a new one or by choosing an already existing one and then give your virtual machine a deployment name. So I am going to call mine as Bugzilla. After that, choose the region or zone where you want to deploy your virtual machine. And then make sure that the image is the one that you got from the link in the description box. After that, choose the size of the virtual machine according to your requirements. And for the authentication type, I am going to go with the SSH public key authentication. And lastly, give yourself a username, so I am going to call mine as CIS. And once you are satisfied, simply click on review plus create. After that, you need to wait for the validation process to complete. Once the validation process is done, simply click on this create right over here. And then you would be prompted to download the private key and create resource. So download the private key in a secure folder because this is the private key that you would be using to connect to the SSH terminal of your virtual machine. After that, simply wait for the deployment process to complete. Once the deployment process is done, the next step is to connect to our virtual machine using the SSH terminal. For that, simply click on go to resource. And from this overview page, we are going to click on connect and choose SSH. After that, Simply copy this command and paste it inside either a command prompt or a PowerShell and then replace this path for the path where you have downloaded your private key. After you have replaced the path for the private key, simply hit enter and once you are prompted, type in yes and hit enter once more. So now this command prompt is going to be connected to the SSH service of a virtual machine thus becoming an SSH terminal. Now inside this SSH terminal, we can start setting up our Bugzilla issue tracker starting off by setting up our database. So for that simply type in the command sudo mysql underscore secure underscore installation and then hit enter. After that simply go along this installation or setting up of our database. So if I want to change the current root password, so when prompted to type in the current root password, for now it is none. Simply go along the setting or the setup as you like. Once you're done. The next step is to actually head inside my MariaDB and then to create a new database for Bugzilla. Now, simply click the link in the description box to come to this step-by-step -step blog post guide on how to set up Bugzilla issue tracker and from here you can simply copy the command. So to open up the MySQL shell, simply type in the command sudo space MySQL and then hit enter. After that, we want to create a new database for our Bugzilla a new user for our Bugzilla and then grant that user all of the privileges. So for that head back to the blog post and copy these three commands and paste them inside the SSH terminal. After that, what we want to do is that we want to flush the privileges or apply these privileges. But before we do that, keep in mind that we created the database named as Bugzilla and the username that we have created is bug admin with the password change me. Now, when you are creating your database and your user, make sure to give yourself a different database name, a different username and a different password. Anyways, to apply these privileges, we are going to use these two commands which is going to apply the privilege and exit from the MySQL shell. So paste them inside the SSH terminal and then hit enter. Once you are done with that, what you need to do is that you need to restart the service of MariaDB. So for that, simply copy this command to restart MariaDB service and paste them inside the SSH terminal and then hit enter. Now the next step is to actually configure the Bugzilla database connection. For that, the very first thing that we are going to do is that we are going to check the script for check setup. So simply copy these two commands. The first command is to head inside the Bugzilla directory and the second command is to open up the script file. So paste that in the SSH terminal and then hit enter. Now you would see that it is going to run that script and look for some kind of error. Now once the script is done, you get that there are some things missing. So 
To complete the connection, we need to open up the local configuration files. For that, head back to the blog post and copy this command and paste that command in the SSH terminal to open up that configuration file. Now within this configuration file, we are going to change some of the tags over here. First of all, if you are running a Red Hat Linux, then you use this web server group as Apache. But in our case, we are running Ubuntu, therefore we type in the web server group as www, then a hyphen followed up by data. And then we go down. Now the DB driver is going to be MySQL, the DB host is going to be localhost, but the DB name as we know that we gave was Bugzilla. So simply copy this Bugzilla from here or type that in the SSH terminal in front of the DB name. After that, you need to provide the username for the user or admin user that you created for that database which was bug admin. So simply copy that and paste that in front of DB underscore user. After that, go down in this file and provide the password that you have given for that user which in my case is change me. After that, you don't have to do this but if you have given a different port for your database then provide that port over here. Once you're done, simply hit Ctrl O and then enter to save the file and Ctrl X to exit from this file. Once that is done, we need to run the check setup script once more. For that, head back to the blog post, copy this command and paste it inside our SSH terminal. After that, it is going to create database, create tables and run a little more stuff. So be patient and wait for the processing to complete. Once the processing is done, it is going to prompt you to provide the email address of the administrator. So I'm going to type it as test at test.com but make sure to provide a valid email address. After that, you provide the information for the test admin. Once that is done, you can move on to the next step which is to set up a Apache configuration file. For that, head back to the blog post, copy this command and paste it inside the SSH terminal. This is going to create the bugzilla configuration file and open that up. Now in this configuration file, you want to paste in some of the commands which you can get from the blog post. So copy these commands and paste them inside the SSH terminal or in the bugzilla configuration file but make sure to change the server name. So if you have a domain, you're going to type that domain in front of this server name tag. But if you do not have a domain and you're just running the virtual machine, in that case you're going to paste in the IP address of your virtual machine. Now to get back the IP address of your virtual machine, simply head back to Microsoft Azure and from here simply click on overview. After that, you're going to copy this public IP address and paste it inside our configuration file in front of server name and then Ctrl O and enter to save the file and Ctrl X to exit from the file. Once that is done, you want to reload the service of Apache for that simply copy this command and paste them in the SSH terminal and then you want to enable the bugzilla side using the bugzilla configuration that you have just created. For that, copy this command and paste it inside the SSH terminal. Now after that, you will be prompted to again restart the service of Apache. So simply hit the up arrow two times and run the system CTL reload apache2 command once more. Once that is done, you need to enable all of the modules required for bugzilla. For that, simply copy this command and paste them in the SSH terminal and after that, run the sudo system ctl reload apache2 command once more. After that, we need to shift the ownership of the directory of bugzilla to apache. For that, head back to the blog post, copy this command and paste that command inside the SSH terminal. After that, what we want to do is that we want to finish setting up our apache. Before that, we need to check the syntax. So simply head back to the blog post, copy this command and paste it inside our SSH terminal and then hit enter. So it says that the syntax is OK. Now we can end off the setting up of our Apache by simply restarting the service of Apache 2 and you're done. Now we can finally test out the installation of Bugzilla. For that, the very first thing that we're going to do is that we're going to shift our user to the root user. So type in the command sudo space hyphen i and then hit enter. After that, we want to head inside the directory of Bugzilla for that copy this cd command and paste it inside the SSH terminal and then we are going to run the test server script. So for that simply copy this command paste it in the SSH terminal and what you can do is that you need to provide the IP address or the domain that you did for the configuration file for Apache. So I used the IP address of my virtual machine so that is why I'm going to remove this URL and change this HTTPS to HTTP and then head back to my Microsoft Azure, copy the IP address once more, paste it in the SSH terminal and end it off by a forward slash and then I simply need to hit enter. 
So you would get something like this that the web server is running OK, test OK, OK and OK. So now you have basically set up Bugzilla properly. If you want to head over to the web interface, then what you can do is that you can open up a new tab, type in the IP address of your virtual machine and then hit enter. And you would be able to access the web interface for your Bugzilla installation. Anyways, that brings us to the end of this tutorial. Now if you have any queries regarding this tutorial, make sure to leave that query in the comment section down below and we will get to you as soon as possible. And make sure to check out the links in the description box for the step-by-step -step blog post listing on how to set up Bugzilla issue tracker on Azure and also for the marketplace listing for Azure. And finally, if this video has helped you in any way, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel.